Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a crime, horror, and mystery film called Braid. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Petula and Tilda are struggling artists who have become drug dealers to survive. One day, the two are counting their merchandise in an apartment in New York when the cops suddenly show up, forcing them to flee through the fire escape and leave their stash behind. On a train, Tilda sits alone and reads her journal while Petula is in the bathroom calling their supplier, Coco. Coco demands that they pay back the cost of the merchandise within 48 hours, and as they talk, the train conductor shows up and interrupts their call. He asks for Petula's ticket, but since she doesn't have one, she offers him 20 minutes of heaven instead. Then, Petula returns to their seat, sticks a piece of gum under it, and sleeps before arriving in a small town. As Petula and Tilda walk down the street, a homeless man recognizes them, pointing out that they always come back. Inside a taxi, the girls wonder how their wealthy, unstable childhood friend, Daphne, is going to welcome them. They plan to search Daphne's house for the safe containing her money, which they hope to use as payment for the stash that they've lost. To do that, Petula tells Tilda that they'll have to play their game, wherein Petula pretends to be a doctor, while Tilda acts as Daphne's daughter. As Tilda listens to Petula, she suddenly remembers how the three of them used to play when they were kids, and it's obvious how much she's hated it right from the beginning. Running out of options, Petula reminds Tilda to do everything Daphne says, but Tilda can't even bring herself to agree with her friend. In the mansion, Daphne softly hums while washing the dishes. When Tilda arrives and greets Daphne like she's her mother, Daphne happily plays along and asks Tilda how her day went. Tilda then says that they were dismissed early from school and asks for some food, sending an eager Daphne to start cooking for her pretend daughter. Outside, Petula, now playing the doctor, deposits their cell phones in a mailbox. There are three rules to the game. First, everyone must play. Second, no outsiders allowed. Third, nobody leaves. Back in the kitchen, Daphne sloppily makes a sandwich and serves it to Tilda. Then. Daphne grabs Tilda's hand, obsessing over her uncut nails. She also notices Tilda's teeth and orders her to brush her teeth before leaving to prepare for the doctor. However, Daphne returns and scolds Tilda for not moving, attempting to trim her nails with a pair of scissors when Tilda refuses to do it herself. Luckily, Petula rings the doorbell just in time and interrupts them. Scared, Tilda runs to Petula and asks for help, but Petula ignores her and instructs her to stay in character. Daphne then welcomes the doctor back, and as Tilda sits quietly for her checkup, Petula assures Daphne that Tilda is healthy. However, Daphne disagrees and says that Tilda has been coughing all week. Being obedient, Tilda begins coughing to please Daphne. When Daphne adds that there's also something wrong with Tilda's posture, Petula brings out a reflex hammer and hits Tilda's knee. Unsatisfied, Daphne reminds them of the first rule. So, Petula takes out a mallet hammer and apologizes to Tilda before striking her knee. Tilda shouts in pain as her knee bleeds, and this brings joy to Daphne. After that, Daphne tells the doctor to measure her, but when Petula realizes that she's forgotten the tape, Tilda tells her their third rule states that nobody leaves. For dinner, Daphne cooks some weird soup, with flowers as ingredients. She then serves the soup to Petula and Tilda, and leaves for a moment, and a tied-up Tilda asks Petula to pass the salt. As Petula does, Tilda whispers to her that they're running out of time. Unfortunately. Before Petula can answer, Daphne returns and invites her to a guest room, leaving Tilda in misery. After taking Petula to her room, Daphne tells her that it's good to have her back. Downstairs, Tilda realizes that she's hallucinating being in front of a mirror and combing her hair after staring at her food for too long. That night, Petula feels uneasy after someone turns her doorknob, trying to get into her room. Thinking it's Tilda, Petula leaves her room and ends up in the kitchen where she finds Daphne taking some sleeping pills. Petula then pours herself a glass of water, but as she's about to leave, Daphne threatens her with a knife and tells her to stay. Convinced that Petula is a male doctor, Daphne kisses and forces her to have make-believe intercourse with her. The next day, Tilda tries to open the mailbox, but Petula stops her. She reminds Tilda not to break any rules, worried that they might get caught. She then reveals to Tilda what Daphne has made her do the previous night, and as they talk and laugh about it, Tilda suddenly starts acting weird. She once again hallucinates due to the amount of substance she's consumed, causing her to remember a childhood memory. Jealous, Petula takes a pill too, and leaves Tilda who was having a flashback about her argument with Daphne when they were kids. Young Tilda refused to play their game, and as the girls fought, Daphne was accidentally pushed out of the treehouse and landed on the ground. Daphne was immediately taken to the hospital, where Petula and Tilda lied and told Detective Siegel 
that their friend had fallen out of the treehouse. Siegel wanted to know exactly how Daphne fell out, so Petula dropped a small yarn doll into his hand to demonstrate. Doubtful the girl's honesty, Siegel looked inside Daphne's room and overheard the doctor telling her grandmother that although she was okay, her abdomen had been critically damaged, adding that she might not be able to conceive. Back in the present, Daphne smiles in the bathroom as she looks at the result of her pregnancy test. Meanwhile, Petula experiences the drug's effects, which involves someone burning her arm. Believing she's hurt, Petula continues wandering around the mansion until she stumbles into Daphne's room and finds the car keys. She then hurries outside and informs Tilda that they need to leave, but as she tries to open the car, Daphne shows up and knocks them both out with a baseball bat. At the police station, Siegel promises to deal with Daphne after receiving a call from someone. Back in the mansion, Petula and Tilda regain consciousness and realize that they are bound and gagged using braids of their hair. Daphne is completely consumed by her delusions, thinking of her friends as her own children. Daphne intends to keep Petula and Tilda by her side, and as the girls struggle, the doorbell suddenly rings. As Daphne answers the door, Siegel informs her that the neighbors are complaining about women screaming from her home. Daphne then lies, saying she's adjusting to her new medication, but the detective finds that suspicious and uses the water leak in her house as an excuse to enter her mansion. Daphne is anxious about Siegel's presence, so she lies once again and says she's still mourning the sudden loss of her grandparents. After Siegel offers his condolences, he picks up a book on the floor and sees a picture of Daphne, Petula, and Tilda. Siegel wonders if they're still talking to each other, but Daphne says she's kept her distance from the girls since her grandparents believed them to be a bad influence on her. However, Daphne has always disagreed with them, for she thinks Petula and Tilda are geniuses. Daphne also tells Siegel that the world will start to feel their absence, making the detective even more suspicious since the authorities have been looking for Petula and Tilda for quite some time. Siegel then asks Daphne how she knew that they were missing, adding that their disappearance isn't national news, so there's no way she could have read about them. Edgy, Daphne fails to answer the detective's question and stops him from going upstairs when he hears a noise coming from the attic. Daphne then asks for Siegel's search warrant, and when he's unable to show her one, she asks him to leave. Defeated, Siegel tells Daphne that the friends she's trying to protect are wanted fugitives before finally leaving. After some time, Daphne starts barricading the mansion. Meanwhile, Petula and Tilda still fail to locate the safe. One morning, before breakfast, Daphne makes Tilda wash her hands, leaving Petula alone with her. She then starts speaking in riddles, giving Petula clues as to where she can find the safe and says that they can leave once she discovers it. Confused and worried, Petula runs after Tilda, who's just listening to them the whole time. She tells Petula that the riddles are hints and urges her to find the safe, forcing a reluctant Petula to leave her with Daphne. From a window, Petula sees a small statue of three women in the gazebo. She then runs to inspect it and finds a clue underneath it before returning to the mansion and following a crack on the ceiling that leads to a room. There, Petula closes all the curtains, revealing another clue in the mirror. With this, Petula finds the safe and opens it using the number she's seen from the statue, mirror, and calendar. Finally, after gathering Daphne's inheritance, Petula bursts into Tilda's room where her friend writes in her journal that Daphne will eventually catch Petula trying to escape. Tilda is worried because Daphne always gets Petula, but Petula is too excited about their escape plan to even notice her friend's troubled expression. That night, Petula and Tilda pack their stuff and try to hitchhike, but nobody stops for them. Exhausted, Petula snaps at Tilda for not helping her, and as they argue, Daphne shows up in a car and runs Petula over. Later on, Petula wakes up and finds herself tied to a wheelchair after making it clear that she has no intention of letting them go. Daphne takes Paula to a room where Tilda is locked in a cage. Daphne says she suddenly remembers the night that she had poisoned her grandparents, annoyed at them for trying to get a caretaker for her. For the girl's punishment, Daphne makes a horrified Tilda watch as she gives Petula a Glasgow smile. Meanwhile, the homeless man from the train station reports to Siegel that he saw Petula and Tilda days ago. The next day, Daphne informs Petula and Tilda that they're free to go, adding that the cops are looking for them. She then mocks Petula and Tilda, telling them that the authorities might not recognize them because of their scars. Suddenly, Daphne gets mad and orders the girls to clean the room for her baby, so Tilda gives Daphne a reality check by reminding her she's not pregnant because she's infertile. Daphne tries to explain that she feels the baby kicking, and when Tilda asks who her baby's father is, Daphne says it's the doctors. Tilda then fails to control her laughter. While on the other hand, Petula plays along and tells Daphne that she needs an emergency C-section. In another room, Petula and Tilda change to scrubs and prepare to operate on an unconscious Daphne. 
intending on killing her using medical tools. However, Siegel arrives just in time to stop them, instructing Petula and Tilda to put their hands on the back of their heads. Unfortunately for the detective, Daphne suddenly gets up and stabs him in the back. Tilda joins in hurting him too, while Petula initially refuses to bludgeon Siegel. She eventually uses the mallet hammer to hit the poor man. After that, the girls bury Siegel's dismembered body in Daphne's yard. They then discard Siegel's car in a pond before returning to the mansion, where their wounds magically disappear after taking a shower. In the bathroom, Petula dances and sings to music playing in her head, also shaving until blood replaces the shaving cream on her face. Meanwhile, Tilda and Daphne are in the kitchen, still acting like mother and daughter. Tilda then stands up and takes a bow when Petula does the same. It seems like they have just finished performing a show. Outside, Tilda plays in the yard while Daphne and Petula watch over her. When Daphne leaves and Petula realizes that she's alone, she follows them into the gazebo, where a bloody seagull surprises her. Daphne and Tilda only laugh at Petula, and as they're about to return to the mansion, Petula sees the mailbox open, which now contains the small yarn doll she'd given Seagull before. Confused, Petula picks up a shovel and digs up Seagull's grave, which she finds empty. Frustrated, Petula returns to the mansion and sits on the couch, eventually realizing that the same piece of gum she'd stuck under the train seat is placed under the couch. Petula discovers that the underside of the sofa is full of gum, also finding Tilda's journal, which contains everything that's happened to them up until that time. Daphne is glad Petula has found the diary, thinking it might convince Petula not to run away anymore. Daphne then reveals that Petula always tries to escape every time they play, but ends up returning anyway and forgetting everything. She also tells Petula to look at her arms, which are marked with brandings from her running away. Scared, Petula asks help from Tilda, who later on reveals that all the events from the train and everything else are not real, and are all just a part of the game of make-believe. Petula cries as Tilda reminds her that they don't need to leave the mansion, saying they have everything that they need there. With the truth finally out in the open, a desperate Petula eventually accepts the hand that Tilda offers. In a room where a toy train set is seen running, it is revealed to be the train that they'd hopped on earlier. The girls also like to paint, and they use acrylic paints that are called Seagull. Later on, the girls decide to kill themselves by hanging, slitting one's wrist, and drinking poison. However, that only ends another round of their game. After some time, a much older Daphne washes the dishes and hears the doorbell rung by a wrinkled hand. Then, Tilda arrives home and greets Daphne like she's her mother, implying that they've been playing their game for many years. When Daphne, Petula, and Tilda were children, they played a fun and innocent game. However, as they got older and their delusions intensified, the game transformed into their reality. Petula was the only one who tried to end the game, but with every attempt, she still ended up playing. This only signified that they couldn't return to the real world anymore, for they were too absorbed in their own fantasies. In the end, the three girls fully embraced the childhood they couldn't let go of, forever trapping themselves in the walls that they had created. Remember kids, don't do drugs. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.